Hey, welcome to today's class of how the rules have changed in education. Today we're going to talk about how research that was developed in the 90s showing us the brain's blueprint, how the federal government used this information to set new grade level expectations. And we want you to try to understand how these expectations have created learning gaps in our classrooms and this is one of the areas that parents and grandparents need to understand and so they can help focus on supporting the gaps in the education. For instance, in the old days, before the research, let's say we thought the first grade, a first grade student is, was able to start here and get all the way to here in one year. After using the research, we learned that we should be expecting our children to grow from here all the way to here. So we added on a grade level expectation. The problem is, to get to this area right here, without extending the classroom days, without extending the year at all, no one thought about how we're supposed to go from here to here in the same amount of time. Something had to give. And the thing that has been given up is the daily review and practice of the fundamentals. We now know that a brain, long-term memory, develops best if it's seen the same content day after day until it really grasps and understands and begins to comprehend it. Once it comprehends it, it does not mean that we, we can't go back or we shouldn't go back to check and monitor to see if it's still retained. In the old days, we would spend up to an hour in math class. In this hour, you would take maybe a third of it to introduce a new idea. We'll put that I for introducing a new idea. Then we take a third of it to practice this new idea. The last third was always to go back to review the idea that had been introduced the day before. And that's what a classroom math hour would consist of. Now, because of the fact that we've been told to raise these expectations and not, we're not given any, other, any more time in the classroom to do it, the thing that has been lost is the review time. Now, if the long-term memory needs to be continuously practiced and reviewed, the content needs to be con continually reviewed daily, and we're not doing that part, we're creating a gap, we're creating lost content. Example, if you have a child that's in second, third, fourth, fifth grade, and you spend time every week studying the spelling words, Many of the kids of your children can get 100 on that test on Friday. But then in the end, at the end of the six weeks check, when they have to go back and do these words again, they score much lower. What happened was, once we introduced and practiced those spelling words for a week, we moved on and never went back to continually, as we're adding new words, we never checked to see and review those words that we'd learned before and long-term memory did not have them in really well in there. So what we need to do, because our teachers can no longer spend the time practicing and reviewing that they used to in the classroom, parents, grandparents, this is your opportunity, this is your chance to fill, help fill in a gap that's really needed. If you would focus 10 minutes a day on just reviewing the basic math facts that have already been taught, the long-term memory will have a better chance of retaining these facts, these tools, so that when they need them down the road into multiplication division, they'll be able to pull them up quickly. Again, fluency is how fast a brain is able to pull up the key, the tools that it has, and to apply them. When you're adding two plus two, a child should be able to answer four within a two second count. If they're not able to, their fluency level is slow and they need to increase that.
again, 10 minutes a day, reviewing and practicing already learned skills will increase the fluency level. And that's the gap that we can fill in. That's the lesson for today.